So we recently, uh, remember the last time we got Little Caesars when they did the Batman thing? Yes, the Batzoni. The Batzoni, right. And I know on the main show we ended up talking about the, the Spider-Verse Burger King thing, right? Yep, yep. Um, but we, my wife and I, April and I, have been watching on Freevee. Right. One of the many uh, free channels that you can get on the old, uh, you know, streaming services and whatever. Sure. There's a channel on there that's just playing all the old prices rights. <laughs> right. Okay. And I think they're currently in 1983. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a deal where, like, um, you know, my we have an older TV in the living room with the Fire Stick plug-in. Right. Whereas my kid is a brand new TV that my dad got him for Christmas, so it has all the stuff built in. Or and downloadable or whatever, yeah. Yeah, like there's no like plug-in thing. Like it's already like Fire Stick enabled or Amazon whatever enabled, right? Right, that's the way my TV is when I bought it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently there's like certain channels and stuff that stream differently versus like an actual Apple T or, you know, a smart TV versus the plug-in gimmick, right? Okay. So, my kid was looking for, like, America's Funniest Home Video, watches those, and finds the price is right, and he's like, what is this? And then, like, just, just like, this past Sunday, like, we were done, like, working in the yard. Um, like, our day was done, and like, oh, you want to watch a movie? It's like, no, I'll just watch, like, two episodes of <laughs> 1983 Price is Right, you know? Your son seems like a Plinko guy. Well, we haven't gotten to a Plinko episode yet, oh, you know? okay. Um... I don't know when Plinko debuted, but I'd have to look that all up, you know? Right. Um, like, we were on there, like, there was an episode, and you know the, uh, uh, what would they call them? Later, they would brand them as, like, Barker's Beauties or whatever. Right, Blansky's Beauties rip off. Blansky's Barker's. Beauties, right. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know Diane, right? Mm-hmm. Um... This was an episode where they were refer. They had mentioned that Diane just got married recently, right. and I know, like, I think I think her last name is Diane Parkinson or Parkin something, right? Right. And on this episode, they said her name is something different. Okay. Um. Right. Her name's Diane Parkinson, and she had just gotten married, and they called her by like whatever her like new married name was, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Right, so we're watching those, and you know because it's free. There's commercials every now and then. Not as many commercials as like you'd done the original viewing of them, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was commercials on there for Little Caesars pretzel crust pizza. Yep. Okay. And I would assume that you um have you got. Um, Little Caesars lately? No, like we did Little Caesars, like you said, for the Bat Zoni. Yeah. Before that, the last time I had Little Caesars had to be fifteen years ago. Like, okay, it was. Remember, there was one up where the Sugarmans was in the parking yeah. lot. That's the last time I had that. Then that was like a detailing place, then a rent a car place, then a whatever. So yeah, that's the last time I had. Some. Okay. So I did I I did it through the app, okay? Okay. The app because they were doing a deal where like uh it was the same weekend as the NFL draft, Little Caesars <laughs> would have sponsored the NFL draft. Pretzel crust pizza was back, right? Mm -hmm. Um so the app first of all does not give you an option to create your own pizza. Oh, that it seems dumb. It literally gives you like you want pepperoni or no pepperoni? Pepperoni every time, yes. Go ahead. Cheese sauce or regular sauce. Okay. Or half and half. Ooh, okay. And then they have a couple, like, pre-mades, which is, like, a meat feast, a supreme, uh, Hawaiian, and a veggie, right? Mm-hmm. So, again, through the app, you can't pick... You know, there's no option to do the whatever. But on the website, you can create your own pizza with the limited things, whatever. So I'm having the damnedest time trying to figure out the goddamn app. 
up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and we end up getting the pretzel crust with cheese sauce. As opposed to the pretzel crust with regular sauce, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll have you know, it sucked. I sounds like it. But my kid loved it. Oh, no. Yes. That's not good. That means no. you're going to be eating it. Hopefully, they really mean limited, limited time for the pretzel crust pizza. Well, that this was two weeks ago, and as of this recording, it's still an option, right? Mm-hmm. So I go, I do the thing through the app, right? And when you go to the Little Caesars, you walk in, and if you're making your order there, they have like a little counter and a person that you could talk to. But then to the right, they have like two giant like you ever go to like um like a grocery store or They're the warming like, ovens kind of a deal. Yeah, but it's like a big two big giant warming ovens with a QR code reader thing on there. Mm-hmm. So you pull up your order on the app. You scan the QR code on the thing, and then it opens the door that your whatever is in. Right, so they can have multiple doors. It'll only open yours. Right. And uh, like I said, I, I screwed up, and I got the cheese, the, the 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 stuffed pretzel crust with the cheese sauce, and it was terrible. Mm. Now, just r- quickly back to the prices, right for a second. All right. As as you're watching the prices, right. Uh, yeah. Again, whenever they do, I don't remember when it started, but it was definitely in the eighties. Um, whenever they would have a large screen TV, which was like you know a new thing in in you know the eighties. Yeah, we're not there yet, but go right. ahead. It was always Runko TVs. Hmm. Do you remember Runko's? The like the place that they would have like wedding receptions, this and that, over by um, the McDonald's and and Burger King in uh, Dunmore. No, it's now like either a Subaru or a Toyota dealership or something like that. But there was a like you know you'd go and you could have receptions or parties, or birthdays, whatever there. And it was near right there where in Dunmore where the uh, montage video was. You know where that is was right. I do. So it was across the street from that. Well, that place was my brother's, my sister-in-law, my brother's wife's family owned that. And that was Runko's. Her name was Lori Runko before she married my brother. And their family, one of the, like, brother, her mother, one of her brother, like, one of her uncles, I mean, uh, owned the Runko TV thing. So he sold them to like, or he gave them to the prices right to give away for advertisement and everything. And I guess he was like pretty loaded because um, I never saw it before we start, like my brother and her were dating, like they would have the, 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 the holiday meals or whatever. And he'd show up in the limo and the limo driver would eat with them. But my brother, we always laughed anytime Runko TVs. And I don't know when it stopped. I don't even know if they still make them. Uh, was on The Price is Right, and it used to make me laugh. That's all I got. I just thought you might find that amusing, so when you do see it, you'll know that there's a connection to my to my, to me somehow. I'm just looking here. Bronco TVs. They do still have a, I'm looking at Runco 50-inch plasma high-definition TV. There you go. Yeah. Now, it says here, and again, at least according to Wikipedia, it's mentioning Runco International. Um, they were, they, so it says, uh, founded in Northern California, blah, 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 blah. Uh, first Runco large screen projection was 1970. Uh, home video projector 1987. They do have an official website, runco.com. There you go. Yeah, there's still now. See, runco.com takes you to planner, P L A N R. So I think they may not be in business anymore because, um, oh no, planner. Okay, planner does like business solutions. Okay, I see what's going on here. Uh, okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, I no, I, I don't remember the place in Dunmore. Right. Um, but I will say this: according to their Wikipedia, um, uh, the company was acquired by Planner Systems in 2007. So he probably sold out. You know what I mean? 
to them. Of at some course. Point. I'll have to ask next time I'm at the, one of the family meetings. I, I always wondered why they all didn't have Runko TVs on their walls. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, I will say this as I'm looking up other information, like we're watching, like, so the reason I figured out it was 1983 mm-hmm. um, episodes that we were watching was because there was a couple episodes that we watched where they were giving away pinball machines. Ooh. And I went and I looked up the pinball machines and it says first manufactured in 1983. So I'm like, ah, oh, we're right in the ballpark in 1983, you know? Right. Uh, Plinko debuts in 1983, so... You're getting close. We're getting close to the debut, the grand debut of Plinko, yes. Right. Did you know LeBron James had, like, a Plinko TV show in the last couple of years? No! It was just a Plinko ripoff? I'm looking that up now, but I remember seeing the commercials for it. You might be faster on the draw than me. Is it... (laughs) Uh, is it called Plonko? Yes, it is. I think so. I'm looking at uh, Plinko. Game. Oh, no, it says, okay, his new game, The Wall. Yeah, and it had the thing where you drop the things on. It's just Plinko, man. Uh-huh. I guess the uh, the trademark ran out, you know? I guess. They literally have, oh, it was 2016. It says, LeBron explains why the Price is Right inspired his new game, The Wall, inspired or blatantly ripped off. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for the LeBron James game with the little guy who climbs the Matterhorn while it yodels. <laughs> Did you get to that one? You no, know, we haven't got to, like, the only, like, you know, like, none of the, like, real flashy games mm-hmm. yet. Like, um, Three Strikes we had... Did you get the did you get the the putt one? No, the no putt one, no yodel. Mm-hmm. No, I always like the putt one where you have to pick the prices and you get closer. I missed the guy's last name, and I wish there was a way that I can go back. Um, but he ended up, like he ended up doing real good. He like he got like the thousand dollar on the wheel, and then he got five thousand on his second spin. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he didn't win the showcase showdown though, but like uh, he was a real animated, real whatever guy, and he gets up on the stage and he's talking to Bob and like making small talk with you know Bob Barker, and uh, he mentions to Bob like a uh, guy guys from Mississippi, and he says to Bob, "When are you coming back to Biloxi?" Right. Okay. So Bob's like, "Oh, oh yes," because uh, I guess it comes out that Bob was a host, you know, for a period of time, late 70s, early 80s, whatever it was, of the Miss Teen USA pageant that was held in Biloxi, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And this guy was a talent coordinator for those type of of events. Right. And I was hoping to hear his last name just so I could Google him and make sure everything ended up okay in his life. (laughs) Okay. Follow what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but I did it. They're like they say they're like, oh, whatever. And I'm like, I can't quite make it out. And I put the subtitles on. I couldn't, you know, the subtitles is like whatever, right? Um, but that's what I've been watching. Did you ever hear about the guy? I'm looking it up now. He was the contestant who knew too much. The perfect bid. You know what? So I was looking up stuff to show, you know, um, my kid and whatever, and I saw that video come up in, like, searches and stuff, but we didn't watch it. Right, because the guy had just basically spent his life memorizing prices Mm -hmm. on the prices, right? And he ended up getting the showcase showdown, I guess it was. uh, He was getting the perfect bids on everything somehow. I don't know. It's just, like, that's you have a lot of time. That's right up there with the guy who memorized the uh, order of the press your luck thing. Now, see that. So that's a little bit easier because I think there was a documentary on it a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and I think it only ended up being that there was like twenty six or thirty six recurring patterns. Right. So it was essentially just like you ever see like the infomercial, and I wish the guy, I wish I can remember the guy's name, but he got popped on like some sort of opportunity or whatever it was. <laughs> right. Um, like the mega memory guy, right? Hmm. Where, like, oh, if you say any date, like, oh, they memorize the calendar. And, like, if you say any date, like, you know, you have to say the month, the date, and the year, because of my memory, I could tell you what day that was. Like, a Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, like, I can 
you know, you can flip through the yellow pages and you tell me what letter you're on. You tell me what column you're in. I could tell you a word that's in that column, right? Right. It's like all these like me- memory tricks, right? So, and the way that he teaches you these things and like speed ring courses and so forth. And the, 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 the real gist of it is, is that you, with your memorization, you're not like reading stuff. Like you would normally read like one line, two lines, three lines, left to right. You're, you're almost like memorizing the block of words as a picture. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're teaching your brain to read that way, as opposed to line by line by line, but like memorizing a picture. And that picture just happens to be a cluster of words. Right. Right. So the guy who did the pressure luck thing essentially just like did that. He just taped a bunch of the episodes and every time that the thing would flash, he would just memorize that pause the next thing. And like, he would use like one thing, like, because there was like X amount of blocks around, the hundred dollars would always move around, and he knew if the the hundred dollars was in like whatever of the one hundred like one of the thirty six spots, he knew what the rest of the board was. Right, and like he only had to memorize thirty six things, thirty six pictures essentially. Right, right. Um, now, granted, it moves pretty fast, and you know whatever. Um, but then, if I remember correctly, because. Um, Price is Right didn't use, like, because, like, obviously, like, you go to one grocery store and I go to another grocery store and they're out on the West Coast and whatever it is. So it's one thing to know what the prices of items are, but it's another thing to memorize the prices of the Price is Right prices. Well, that's easier because they're always there right in front of you. But it's – so then that's another thing is you have to watch Every to day. see how much those things come up. You know, like mm-hmm. we're watching like, oh, what are the things you bid on? It's a Fifth Avenue candy bar, right? Mm-hmm. Back when Fifth Avenues had almonds in them. Oh, boy. Right. So we only watch, you know, over the last like week, we've maybe watched like five episodes. Fifth Avenue only comes up once. So you got to watch like hundreds of episodes. It's like, okay, Fifth Avenue's come up like X amount of times and X amount of episodes. The price has been the same the two times. Now the third time it's the same. The fourth time the price changed. Okay. And then you got to like recalibrate your things. That's a little bit more work, right? Yeah. So now are you going to show Asa Happy Gilmore so you can bring it full circle? Uh, we were talking about that as well because this weekend, um, you know, as we talked about in the main show, Gardens of the Galaxy 3. Uh, there was things in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and we always, there's a bunch of lines in it that we say all the time anyway, uh, but there was stuff in Guardians of the Galaxy 3 that like hit these weird Pee-wee's Big Adventure notes for us. Mm-hmm. So we watched Pee-wee's Big Adventure this past weekend. Oh, wow. Right. Lar- um, uh, large Marge. Right. So, and that's, now, I, I will say, so, I'll say this, my kid liked Guardians of the Galaxy 3 more than he liked Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Right. Um, He wasn't on his phone the whole time, Right. So that's a good thing. For Guardians, you mean? For, for Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Oh, okay. Um, but my my son, not unlike my wife, is a chicken. And the large Marge bit could be scary to a young kid, right? Right. So I tell him before we start watching the movie, I'm like, hey, there's a jump scare in the movie. I want you to be prepared for it. Okay. All mm-hmm. right. So she's telling the story. And she's <laughs> about to do the turn. Like, I don't pause it before she says the line right or no i pause it right before she says the line and it looks like this right so i pause it i go the jump scare is coming up right now you have to be ready for it and i do it i see it he sees it and he's like oh that wasn't so bad i'm like it wasn't so bad because i gave you like three warnings for it you know <laughs> right i gave you the big flags like waving them back and yeah. forth. because i know he's a chicken and like you know whatever uh, but Pee Wee's good, man. It holds up. Uh, I think the runtime's like ninety-one minutes, ninety-three minutes. It moves. <laughs> yep. It doesn't linger on things. Even scenes that are supposed to be lingering scenes, when he gathers everyone at the basement of the building mm-hmm. to go over all the whatevers, like they do a time lapse thing. And it's a movie that moves, man. Uh, oh. If they if they made that movie today, that'd be two plus hours. Yep. There'd be like all these weird extra subplots tacked on that you didn't need. And that's the thing. There are a bunch of subplots that are tacked on, but it's like, oh, Pee Wee meets the guy who cut the tag off the mattress. 
Now he's out. Then he meets the, the, the waitress at the thing who wants to go to France. Then she's out. And, like, these are not people that need, like, they don't need intricate backstories, but they give you just enough. Right. Right. It, he gave you everything you need. Uh, the things I remember from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I will always remember. And when he's like, and, and knitting, and knitting, <laughs> it just goes on. That cracks me up. The bit where he fights, uh, which I call in my younger days, I looked at him. I looked like him, the guy who stole the bike. <laughs> um, oh, Francis the- Buxton. Right when they're in the in the tub and they're fighting and they're coming up for air each time yeah. and they're like taking that big gasp and then like rolling over and going into the water that cracks me up and then Pee Wee saving the pet store from the fire and he keeps <laughs> running past the snakes that was that was the scene from Guardians that like there was al- allegories between Pee Wee's and uh, Guardians three. Yep, and he just grabs it, and he falls down. That, you know what? There, uh, there are great movies, and there are perfect movies, mm-hmm. and Pee Wee's is great and perfect. You know what I mean? Because like, there's some movies, like you said, that just give you everything you need, no more, no less, and that's it. And you don't see, like you said, you don't see many of those anymore, but now I want to watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure again. It's, it's one of those movies where... You know, obviously, everything kind of defaults to widescreen, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you watch it in full screen... Right. There's a ton of revealing mistakes in the movie. Okay. Um, and there's a, there's one in particular, like when he chains up the bike. Mm-hmm. In full screen, he's pulling this never-ending chain out of right. the, the, the side thing. I know if this it, one because... In full screen, you can see the hole in the bottom of the basket where it's being fed through, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But in full screen, you don't see that. There's a couple other ones like that. And then I'll just say, obviously, that was like Tim Burton's first like um, theatrical feature. He had done Frank and Weenie before. That doesn't count. But you could see like the ideas for the thoughts and like whatever's for Beetlejuice in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Did you see they greenlit Beetlejuice 2 today? Be- is Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, finally? <laughs> I don't know if it's Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, but can you guess who they got to play Winona Ryder's daughter in the movie? It's the layup of the century if you've seen anything in the last, like, six months. Uh, the, the girl from the Wednesday TV show. Yep, yep, it's her. So I don't. Did you know. see the Wednesday TV show? I have not. I've had a lot of people say that that show would be right up my alley, respectively, Respect. uh, respectfully. But I have not watched it yet. I need to get on that. All right. I think you would enjoy it. It's it's yep. fun. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, I was I was a big sucker for the original Adams. Well, not the original, but the the Angelica Houston Adams family is is another perfect movie as far as I'm concerned. The, the first one, anyway. Yeah, yeah. The first one is great. Yeah. There's people I know that like the second one better than the first one, and I don't think I've seen the second one enough to make that sort of judgment against people. No, I'm with you. The only person, like, not on that, the only time I've ever had to have somebody say something that they liked the second movie over the first, and then I just spent the, it was New Year's Eve, actually, spent the rest of the night belittling that person until, like, they didn't talk to me for a while in the comic shop. All right. (laughs) Was that somebody said that they thought Jaws 2 was a better movie than Jaws, and I had to let them have it. And I, 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 I will say this. Jaws 2 is not a bad movie. It doesn't become the Jaws, you know, parodies that 3 and 4 become. It's actually a semi-good movie, but it's not Jaws. And he was like, oh, I like Jaws 2 is better. I like Jaws 2 better. And I was like, first of all, no anchor blazer in Jaws 2. So right off the bat, you lose. One of the only two guys in the world that I would ever cosplay at a Comic-Con as was in that movie, Mayor Vaughn. Um, but the rest of, you know, the, uh, Jaws 2 is just not the high point that Jaws was, you know? <laughs> So I don't want to give it all, um, but I'll mention uh, to you, and you don't listen to podcasts, especially since it's another week and there's not been another ep- not episode of Salty Keith's podcast, right? Right, right. Uh, Dana Gould, uh, one of my favorite comedians, his podcast comes out semi-regularly, whatever. He's busy, right? Uh, he's, he's, bus- he's busy filming his elaborate 
Um, what if Dr. Zayas was Merv Griffin talk show in his backyard? And I have seen clips of that online, yeah. and yes. it's fantastic. It's great. Um, so, um, two episodes ago, he did, um, like, he does a middle piece where it's like a piece of Hollywood or, like, you know, history, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was about how Jaws 2 was made. And, like, you get bits of Jaws 1 in there and, like, whatever, whatever. But you get this whole thing of, like, the guy that they originally got to direct Jaws 2 was the guy who did, like, this early 70s, like, thriller called Let's Scare Jessica to Death, right? Okay. Which I've seen before. And it's, like, a really creepy atmospheric, atmospheric film. And he had pitched this whole idea of, like, what if, like, Amity is now just, like, this ghost town where everyone, even though, like, Jaws is gone and everyone just constantly, like, the entire town is, like, shell-shocked because of what happened. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like the town is haunted by what happened in part one. And then Quint, or not Quint, um, uh, Roy Scheider's character? Yeah, uh, Sheriff Brody. Sheriff Brody, um, he like hallucinates that the like and the shark is like literally haunting him and like that's how you get your shark stuff in the movie okay mm-hmm. so they film like 6 days of this and the producers are like this ain't working they send a car to the hotel to pick him up to bring him to set but they don't take him to set they take him to the airport where his luggage is waiting for him <laughs> that they took out of his hotel <laughs> And they say, and that's how they tell them, you're fired, and we're going in a different direction with the movie. You know what? These are probably the same people who sabotaged Smokey and the Bandit 3. Right. So I think this movie would have been a better Jaws. And so, right. And there was, okay. And then one other thing. So they're like, well, we can't do this. We can't do that. And they were going to do a Quint prequel, right? Oh my god. The studio would... doesn't want to do that. They want the they essentially want the same movie as part 1, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, "Well, we can't do the same movie as part 1 because um Quint is dead. Richard Dreyfus is filming um Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And um Roy Scheider is getting ready to film The Deer Hunter." <laughs> okay. Okay. So he, after Jaws, they signed Roy Scheider to a three picture deal at Paramount Mm -hmm. to get him to get out of doing the deer hunter to come and do Jaws too. So they, at least they have that connectivity of a human from the first movie. Mm -hmm. They pay him his three movie deal to do one movie in Jaws two. Yep. And De Niro ends up going to play his role in The Deer Hunter. And, you know, I get time will tell to see what was a better decision, you know? Yep. I'll, I'd say getting paid the amount of money for three movies to do one movie is the winner. Mm-hmm. But what do I? I think Deer Hunter might have a la- more lasting legacy than Jaws 2. You know what, though? Would it have been the same movie if Scheider was in it? Do you know what I mean? Right. I, I'm not saying that he's not a great actor. He wouldn't have been able to. But you know what I mean? Like, some things just work, and maybe that piece would change it. Yeah. But I'm not even going to get into the Michael Caine thing with four, which is great. That line, that great. I've never seen the movie, but I did see the house it bought. You know, right. it's magnificent. But the fact that the wife, the mother from the first Jaws movie was just in four because she she never had her name above the title. <laughs> Of a movie, and that was like the thing. She was like, "Yeah, I knew what I was getting into, but I never had my name above the title." And this movie, I, I got it, and I and she was like, and I was happy about that. And I was like, you know what? Good for you. You know what I mean? Good for you. I would do Jaws five if I got my name above the title. The the they the filmmakers are essentially just churning out these sequels, mm-hmm. um, to make money. So why not you, the actors and actresses? Make money too, you know. Don't do these movies for free. I, yeah, I always, I always laugh. Like when, like, I mean, I was, I always said I was young and stupid and principled back in my younger days on some things. But I was always, I never begrudged anybody for, and I'm doing the air quotes, selling out. I'm like, 
because not everybody's, you know, young and artistic. Like, whatever. Get, cash your check and move on. Yeah. You're not going to – there are very few people that are going to have their whole career tarnished by cashing a few checks. You know what I mean? I don't know. I always hated that. So good. Good. For you. Everybody out there, sell out early and often. That's yep. my motto. Make all the money you can. Listen, a, uh, a great man once said, mm-hmm. not, not only make all the money you can, spend as much as it is you can. Mm-hmm. Today, because you'll always make more tomorrow. Ah, nature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you. And you're the one bringing up wrestling. I just want to close the show by saying that. Right, right. All right. So, hey, thanks, everyone. Uh, listening, this was episode 443 of uh, Longbox Heroes After Dark. Uh, Patreon.com slash Longbox Heroes. Uh, the eBay affiliate thing. I don't know. The first payout of that should be coming any day now. I don't know. Right. Any uh, year now. Right. Any year now. Um, but yeah, hey, thanks for supporting the show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for everything. And uh, we'll see you all here next week. You're listening to the soon to be named network, the Lamborghini of Podcast Networks.